Well, it's the next day and I'm ready to start sanding the ceiling. Now, there's two different things you can use. Here's just a hand paddle sander. And see, I've got the, the, uh, the little pad on here, folded it over like that, and I can use that. And I may go get up there and use that around the edges and in different places where I want to get into some tight areas. Okay, and another thing you can use is a swivel head. You see, you put that on an extension pole, and I'm just going to use my broom handle, and it swivels in all different kind of, kinds of directions. You can sand this way, it'll swivel around this way, or whatever. And I may try that up there too, but because it's such a small ceiling, and I've got to get up there around the edges and stuff, I'm going to use this, and I may do a once over with this one here. Now the key with sanding is you just don't want to sand too much. Okay, and I've got my construction, <laughs> construction, <laughs> my handy construction light. And you want to have a light in your room so that you can get up there and you can see any little ridges on your mud that needs to be sanded off. It's so much better than just having the light off and thinking, oh, I, I can see good enough. And then you get all done, you think, oh, here's a spot, here's a spot, here's a spot, and your paint picks that up. It could have a tendency to pick that up. Okay, now I'm glad also this plastic stayed up last night. I was holding my breath to see what was gonna happen, and I'm just gonna leave that up like that because I don't want all this dust to get all over the place, right? And then when I get ready to paint, I'm just gonna leave this plastic exactly there. I'm not gonna put another a uh, row of tape up there or anything because I have to cut in all of the walls now as I explained before. So I'm just going to leave that right there and once I sand I'll get up there with a broom and kind of sweep it down to a certain extent and I'll let the, uh, the dust kind of settle for a while then it's time to start priming. I'm going to start priming in a little while. And I'm going to use a PVA primer. If you want to see how I do that, stick around. Hey, just one more thing about sanding. I'm going to harp on this until the cows come home. The key with sanding is you just want to do it lightly and make sure to get the edges off and stuff. You don't want to sand and sand and sand thinking the more you sand the smoother it's going to get. No! If you do that you're, you're going to take off all of your sheetrock mud that you just put up there and then it's going to get down thin and you're going to see your tape lines and your imperfections below that, okay? so. Just be careful when you're sanding. If you thought I wasn't going to use this extension pole, then I've got some beachfront property for sale in Montana for you. Yes, you have to use this one. And I used, I used the paddle, hand paddle sander around the edges first just because I felt more comfortable doing that but you could get up here with this too and and do the edges but I'm just taking one one section at a time so I see exactly where I'm at it's not a race to see who gets there to the finish line first it's to see who gets there and doing the job right I'm even gonna sand the dark area because that's where all the popcorn ceiling was and um, just to make just to make it smooth and I got goggles on and a mask on and see that's all you have to sand you don't have to sand a whole lot I'm trying to do this so you can see over my shoulder here Angles. Once the 
starts going smoother, you know you've got it. It's just a matter of holding the handle properly. And because this is at an angle, you know, it takes a little bit of doing. Along these edges, I want to be particularly aware of. So I blend those in. I don't want to see a ridge there. Okay. You know, I could go up over my head and go over this way and, and, and all that, but I don't do this every day. I don't want to twist on here and get hurt, twist my back, uh, fall off the ladder. I mean, there's lots of things that could happen. So I, I try to work away from my, uh, away from uh, where my ladder is. I think I already did this area, didn't I? See, straight up over your head, it's kind of hard to do it. If you're at an angle, you can put more pressure on it. I'll just do this little bit right here before I move my ladder. Okay. Have your construction light shining up on the ceiling. Okay? And I just concentrate on where I stopped, where I started, and keep going. One little bay at a time. Don't look at the whole ceiling as one entire thing and think, oh man, how am I going to get this and where did I start? Where did I stop? Let's see, I'm going to, I'm going to maybe put my ladder uphill. Put my ladder uphill and uh, work downhill. Let's see how that works from here. Get up on your ladder a little bit more. See, just that little bit right there is way better. Okay? You can run it this way. And I've already done that edge with the paddle sander, so I don't have to hit it very much. There. Looking good. Okay, keep it up. I gotta get the camera out of here. I wasn't even gonna show this, so you got lucky. Because it's dusty in here. And I don't want this dust all over my camera. That would be bad, because then I wouldn't be able to bring any more videos to you. Another good reason to have your joint on your plastic just beyond your door opening, because see, before I had this taped open, now, I just loosened up the tape and brought this back over here like that and just let it dangle. Because if you think that dust isn't going to go anywhere, like through a door opening, don't kid yourself. Well, the time has come to start are priming. So I went to the store and I got a PVA drywall primer. Now it's important to use something to prime the ceiling. You don't want to use just finished paint up there because if you use just finished paint up there, you see the dark areas up in the ceiling? That ceiling has not seen the light of day for probably 35, 40 years, maybe longer depending how old these condos are. You've got to seal that. And they didn't seal that before. They just ran um, a tape 
and topping up there before they spray textured, you know, the popcorn ceiling stuff on there. So you've got to prime that. And so you can get a primer or a PVA sealer. This is what this is, a PVA sealer. And the client, she wanted a bright white ceiling. And so what I did, the PVA primer comes just slightly off white. And I had them put a little bit more pigment, you know, white in there and they mixed it up. And so it's going to be about the same color as the finished paint. And that'll give the finished paint a more full body color. And, you know, maybe I can get away with just one coat of finish after putting the PVA sealer up there because the PVA sealer is the same color as the, uh, as the finished paint. But you know, this ceiling's not that big. So more than likely, what I'll end up doing is I'll put the primer up and then I'll put a coat of finished paint up there and cut it all in to the ceiling all nice and, and you know, up to the walls and stuff. And at that point, I probably have enough paint and I'll put a second coat of paint on and I probably won't cut it in. I'll just go up close to the walls as close as I can and be done with it. Now this is the this is the paint roller I'm going to use. It's just a weenie roller. Or you call it a mini roller or whatever. This is this is as as big as it is. You know? Just put it on there. And of course, I've got my extension pole, which is my broom handle. And incidentally, not all broom handles threads are created equal. Sometimes your handle may not fit on here. But once you find one and that broom gets to be old and stuff, before you throw away the handle, save it for your painting projects, okay? So that's what I'm going to use. And this is an old roller cover. But I'm going to use it because it'll work. Now when I get ready to do my cut in, I'm going to use this little container here. And you put your hand up like that and hold it like that. Don't hold it like that. Your wrist is going to get sore after a while. Just put it up there like that. And I've got just a crummy throwaway paintbrush again because I don't need to be that careful along there. I mean, I'm going to cut it in as, as close as I can. And even if I get it on the walls, just a little bit at the top edge of the wall, that's okay. Because remember, the top edge of the walls all have to be cut in with the, with the pre-finished color on the walls anyways. Okay? So I'll, I'll still do a good job. So you don't need to spend very much. And what I like to do is I put this... I put this little ring on, on the paint bucket. That way um, I can clean off my paintbrush. And also as I'm pouring, what I like to do is I try to pour that maybe from the back side. Okay? And I put this on here. That way I don't get any dribbles on here. If I do get dribbles, you know, if you don't use that and you pour, most people have a tendency to pour like this. And if you have the color name on your paint or something, guess what usually happens? Brah! Goes right over it. It seems like it always does that. In this case, it's just PVA sealer, but I still like to put this on. Okay. I think we're ready for a project. Hey, there's one more reason why I'm using a weenie roller like that, because I'm up over my head on this ceiling. It's not a flat eight foot ceiling or anything. It's uh, probably 10 feet on one side, then it angles up to maybe 12 feet on this other side. And it gets very difficult if you're not used to painting ceilings, and I don't do very many ceilings, mind you. It's hard to get a, a bigger roller up there and have the constant pressure on there and make sure you have a right enough paint the right amount of paint and all that. Okay, so with the weenie roller, I'm just going to do one little section at a time, little by little. I'll get it done and I won't break my back or my neck, won't get too sore, and it'll be easier to push my nice even weight up there with the little mini roller. Okay?
do a good job. <laughs>